everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a new copy of A Game of Cat and Mouth, a dexterity flicking game by Exploding Kittens. This is a two-player simultaneous flicking game of getting balls through a plastic cat cutout. When I first saw this game, I thought, well, it looks cute, you know, and kids probably will like it. I mean, there is a cat and a rainbow and colors, so yeah, they will probably enjoy this. So after opening the box, the first thing that I was surprised to see was that the components to the game are pretty solid. I mean, thick plastic for the cat, magnetic claws for flinging the balls, and fun rubberized balls. The next thing was that the game had a cool design. The box turns into the playing field, and it was designed to be able to play within seconds. The plastic cat mold slides into the middle, separating the box into two sides. I was first nervous about shoving this piece in because sometimes the games use thin, cheap cardboard, and if you bend it, then you know you most likely have ruined the game. But with this game, it took a little more effort than I thought it would, but the design and the materials that were used makes this game solid so that you can insert and remove that cat head lots and lots of times. So playing the game is straightforward. You place the black ball in the nose slot, three white balls in the teeth slots, and each player starts with four yellow balls. Players will be placing balls inside their cat paw arm and slinging it through the cat mouth, possibly landing on the other player's side of the board. The cat paw arms are magnetic, so they can come off the board. But they are magnetic enough that they stay in place, and when tilted back, the magnet is strong enough that it will cause the arm to fling forward, sending the ball into the air. And it does this in a pretty strong way. To get the ball lower, you might need to lessen how far back that you pull the arm back before letting it go. Players can adjust their aim to a degree and tighten up their form of how far back they're pulling the arm back. Anyways, there are dials on the cat board to keep score, but you don't score points just for shooting the ball through the cat's mouth and landing it on the other player's side. That'd be too easy. You score a point if you do one of three things, and this is where some of the strategy actually comes into play. First, if you hit the black nose, landing it on the other player's side, you get a point. The white teeth are different. I mean, look at them. They are easier to knock off, but if you get all three of the white balls on the other player's side, oh. all at the same time, you ones. score a point. And lastly, if you get all eight yellow balls on the other player's side, eight. all at the same time, then you score a point as well. Those are the three ways. Since everyone is just flinging balls, you just need to decide which balls need to get launched over before another. Because if you're not keeping track of this, the other player might more easily score points on you. So the goal is also straightforward, but at times it might be tougher to do things than you might expect. So is this game even good? Is it worth the $20? Is it just like all those other dexterity ball flicking games? Well, let me answer these. The game definitely surprised me, but let me first start by saying that the game is exactly what it is. It's a dexterity game of flicking balls through the nose and the mouth of a cat. If you don't think that's fun, then this game is probably not going to be fun for you. But if you do like tilting cat paws and flinging balls, then just keep on listening. So the first thing that impressed me above what you see and do is how the game, like the actual physical game, is designed how the claws hold the balls to fling, how the board is slanted so the balls gather in the right place, and the size of the mouth and the balls that go through it. And all of this is just done in a way where you're able to keep flinging balls with minimal upkeep. What I mean is that the balls don't fly all over the room like when I play, say, coconuts. So the hassle of running around and picking up balls is minimal, which just means to me that the game is very well designed. You're going to spend more time playing the game than cleaning up the game. Is the game worth the 20 bucks? I'd say for sure that it is. The components are solid. I mean, the magnets work great. To me, the first thing that I would expect that would break from the wear is the box itself. I'm not sure how long it would take. And the research that I've done shows that there's been no such issue. But I think for 20 bucks, this could give your kids or yourself enough fun to pay for it. And then you could always return to when you wanted to play it always in the future. Prices on board games have gone up. New Euro games these days are ranging from 60 to 100 bucks. I know this isn't a Euro game, so I shouldn't compare it to one, but any game that's good for whatever it does for 20 bucks is a steal for these days. 
Now, if you already have played the game or know more about the game, listen to this part, you know. There are three goals that all have a different difficulty. The black ball can be difficult, but on a scale of one to six, one being easy and six being the hardest, the black ball is probably a four. It's a small space that you need to hit, but you only need to hit the black the off of it, not actually going through the nose space with the ball just being launched. Hitting the white middle tooth could be maybe a two, and the side teeth are a four, as they require you to turn your paw and bend it back at an angle. This is difficult and different because you're used to going straight on. Hitting a yellow through the middle could be maybe a two, just as easy as that middle tooth is. Now, just because the black ball is hard hit doesn't mean that it's not worth going after. In fact, I'd say that it should be the first thing that you should go after because the three whites require you to hit those difficult side teeth. But even without that, you have to manage and know where those white teeth are at at all times. So they aren't all on your side. Yes, if you have a good low shot and I'd say you hit the teeth first, or if the teeth were already hit off and they were just getting flung from side to side, then you might need to focus more on it. Lastly, those yellows can be the easiest to flick through the mouth on the other side, but eight of them can be hard. And Now starting the game, it's only four, which means if you have a good mouth shot, plus you more are likely to hit the white teeth off as well, then go for the yellow ball strategy. The game is all about knowing your strengths and you should focus on what you're good at. Now, this game is a little bit different as far as responding to what the other player does. In this game, it's hard to respond and stop what the other player is doing like you can maybe in other games, but you can adapt to their strategy as well. But in this game of cat and mouth, it can be so quick that you need to go where your strengths lie. You can adapt by changing from yellow ball strategy to black nose strategy to the white teeth strategy. But the game can be so fast, you do what you are best at. Anyways, I'm very happy to get this game and add it to my collection. My kids already have played it so many times, more than 20 bucks worth of playing it already. So play a game of cat and mouse by flicking games with your family and friends in a game of cat and mouth by Exploding Kittens. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.